Okay, um, welcome to the second aspect of our IGCSE Geography series, uh, where we're going to be looking at settlement. Now, for this class, we're going to quickly look at lesson one on settlement, which is uh, settlement and service provision. But in this aspect, uh, we're just going to describe and explain the factors that may influence the site, growth and function of settlement. Then we are going to explain the patterns of settlement. Okay, so some of the keywords uh, we need to look at is settlement. Uh, settlement is a place where people live. Then patterns. Um, pattern, pattern means uh, how something is arranged, how something is arranged and the shape of a settlement uh, is the pattern. Then services, uh, facilities that are offered to people are called services. Facilities offered to people, which include supermarket, uh, cinema, school, and train station. Then hierarchy is the order of importance so of, of a settlement. So quickly, let's look at site and situation of a settlement. Now, what is a site? A site referred to the physical place upon which settlements are built. Or upon which settlement is built, a physical place, the physical location, the point at which the settlement is found itself. Then situation referred to the location of the settlement in relation to other important features. Now the location of the settlement in relation to other important features, uh, example, uh, if the settlement is close to resources or it's between two hills, so let's look at factors that affect the site, factors that affect the growth, and factors that affect the function of settlement. Now, um, these factors are divided into two, which will have the physical factors and the human and economic factors. Now, physical factors that affect the growth uh, of settlement include relief, now, on that relief, you check if it's a flat land, and flat land, because flat land is better for construction and it's also better for uh, things like farming. Now, if it's close to a wet point, uh, such as rivers, to provide water for drinking, and uh, rivers are also good for, for fishing too. Now, valley site, um, which provides shelter from sun and also wind. Uh, we check if it's on top of a hill, which is used for defense. And dry point, so it won't be flooded, to avoid flooding. Now, woodland, if there are wood and forest around, uh, the wood will be used for building, um, cooking, and also hunting in the woodland vegetation. You look at the aspect of the buildings of the settlement. Now, so south facing uh, in the northern hemisphere, we receive more sunlight. So also building to avoid marsh land. Uh, so the building will be stable. Marsh land are land that have high amount of um, water. Uh, so it makes the foundation soft and not stable. So you try to avoid it. Now the soil also, if it is fertile for farming, and bridging point, uh, which are point through which um, you can cross a particular river like a bridge. Now, if it is found there, people tend to live within those areas because it can be easy for you to navigate and it makes it more accessible. Then we have human and economic factors, such as is it near road? If it's near road, it makes it easy for accessibility. Uh, if it's a mining uh, activity taking place, so extraction of natural resources, people tend to live there. Uh, presence of industry because of employment. We also have presence of port uh, for easy import and export of uh, goods and services. Okay. Now, what are the functions, settlement functions? Uh, a settlement function are the main activities existing within a settlement that relates to its economy and social development. Example is tourism. So settlement function, the, the major functions of settlement are commercial function, 
Now, this has to do with businesses, uh, mainly offices. The main commercial area uh, will normally be the CBD within the settlement. Now, another function of settlement is residential function. This is housing. Uh, it's where people live. Also, we have industrial function that has to do with the factories. Uh, traditionally, it's found within the transition zones, uh, but they are now likely to be found within the rural urban fringe. So we're going to explain what transition zone and rural urban fringe is during the course of this settlement series. Now, another function is agriculture. So the farming, and it's obviously normally found in rural areas, uh, although some cities may have some small urban farms. Another one is recreational activity. Now, so any activity that people do in their spare time, uh, this land use may include golf courses, uh, football pitches, museums, sports centers, and tennis court. Then we have retail functions. Uh, this is the shop, which traditionally the main shopping areas have been in the CBD, but now most shopping areas or shopping malls are relocating to the rural urban fringe because it's easy for expansion. Then we have educational functions uh, such as libraries, schools, universities uh, found within the urban area. So this can actually be found anywhere. Then there are other functions of settlement. Uh, all these are part of functions though. Um, there are the ones for market town, ports, um, tourist resorts, and cultural religious centers like Mecca's and Rome. Um, so these are functions of settlement, which you need to know. Now, look at settlement patterns, uh, which is how a settlement is arranged. And there are three major patterns your syllabus needs you to be conversant with, which is the dispersed, the nucleated, and the linear pattern of settlement. So let's look at the dispersed. In a dispersed settlement, there are few buildings which are far apart from each other. So we have few buildings far apart from each other, just like we can see here. Um, so what are the causes of dispersed settlement? We have relief. So relief will lead to a dispersed settlement uh, on flat farmland in mountainous re region or area. Now we have land use and resource availability will lead to uh, dispersed settlement also. Um, so next we have linear settlement. Linear settlement, uh, these are settlements where buildings are grouped in lines. So you see them in a straight line. Um, now they normally develop along a road uh, where you have access, a river valley, flatland and areas with water supply. Now, the major thing is the relief will lead to uh, linear settlement. Um, transport access will lead to linear settlement also, uh, where you have rivers, uh, bridging point will also lead to uh, a linear settlement, bridging point where you can easily cross a river from. Then lastly, we have the nucleated settlement. Now, these are settlements where buildings are grouped together around a central area, just like uh, how you can see it from this diagram here. This is the central area and you have buildings grouped together. Some of the characteristics is that it's a road junction. All the road tend to meet within that point. So causes is usually transport access. We need to nucleated settlement such as road junction. We have things like river bridging point also. Uh, we also lead to it. We have water availability. We lead to it. Land use, uh, resource availability such as farming can also uh, mining can lead to nucleated settlement uh, topography and hill uh, defensive site uh, may lead to nucleated settlement okay this is it for this lesson one so uh, we're going to look at lesson two uh, much later where we'll look at service provisions